You'll want to keep your eye on the Red River the rest of the week and into the weekend as it's expected to crest at 31 feet on Thursday. We're already seeing the flooding throughout the metro. And the Valley Today's Abby Furchner is getting a live look this morning as she joins us from Moorhead. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Lisa. I'm right outside of Moorhead Mall on 3rd Street North, which is completely blocked off because of the flooding. Behind me, you can see the Veterans Memorial Bridge, and that water is not far from hitting the bottom. I know yesterday our highest peak was at around 28 feet, and it really hasn't sunk that much lower. And I know Lisa Green has been talking about, you know, this winter storm that we might be having soon, and that's expected to, you know, make the river levels rise and crest likely on Thursday at around 31 feet. But I just want to show you too, uh, that stop sign is almost completely submerged underwater. And I mean, I'm five, uh, five, seven. And so that just shows, you know, as average stop signs about six feet. That just shows how high too that this is the water is rising. And just from the beginning of this, I just walk in a few feet and my feet are completely underwater already. So it is definitely flooding season. I know for those that maybe not don't live by the Red River, we might not think of what this flooding actually looks like, but here we are trying to give you more of an idea of, you know, why the roads are closed and what is looking it's looking like in the FM area right now. But it's just a reminder that it is spring flooding season and we need to, you know, fight the flood. And Jordan even mentioned he's already had some water in his basement. So those that live around this area too, just make sure you have those precautions and measures in place in case the flooding just kind of leaks into your home as well. Yeah, it's moving fast. It's going up fast. And I know we're getting reports of different highways mm -hmm. that have water uh, over the road as well. So uh, definitely a uh, time to start being aware of it. Abby Furchner reporting live from uh, now down near the Red River. Thank you. The Valley News Live First Alert Storm Team has issued a weather alert day. That's right. We're looking at conditions that are going to be getting tougher tonight and into tomorrow with a winter storm looming. And on top of that, of course, we have the flooding that Abby just talked about. So we're adding water to the system right when some of our rivers are climbing or cresting here in the region. Here's the latest look at the hydrograph for the Red River at Fargo. We are our latest uh, uh, gauge measurement was last night, uh, close to 28 feet. We're having some gauge issues overnight uh, that they are working on addressing for today so we can get an actual accurate measurement. But the forecast shows that we're going to be working our way into major flood stage tomorrow, cresting toward the end of the week, Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday, and then an elongated uh, crest here because of that additional moisture we're adding to the system. We're cresting around that 31 foot mark again in Fargo. And you can access all of our hydrographs and river levels at valleynewslive.com. Just head to our weather page for the latest where you happen to be. Here's a look at our winter storm impacts that it's coming here. It's starting up tonight. We'll see the rain first, changing over to snow. And we're looking at a band of heavy snow, probably a narrow band of heavy snow. Uh, near that transition line. We could see five plus inches there. Can't rule out getting into the double digits, though it's a heavy wet snow that may compact a little bit. Some of it may melt with warmer temperatures. Bottom line is it's going to be messy. We're looking at reduced visibility as it's falling as well with some wind with it. Not necessarily a blizzard or anything like that, but we are looking at some gusts getting into the 30s and maybe to 40 miles per hour. And then we're also going to see that chance for some sleet and freezing rain in that transition zone. Eventually this does end by Friday morning, but until then, messy conditions. Here's a look at the latest radar. We do have some moisture in the valley, especially up north. Some areas of rain and snow detected on the radar in northeastern North Dakota over Langdon, stretching down into Nelson County, and that's lifting northward. Temperatures are in the 30s. It's 38 in Fargo, 37 in Grand Forks. We're right around freezing over to the east with wind that's not too strong just yet. We do have a speed to 20. And a forecast for today that still looks mild, at least 40s to some low 50s, some spotty chances for some rain, especially the farther west you are. We may even see some areas of sunshine today too before this system kicks in. Looking at that winter storm watch again for late tonight and continuing into the day tomorrow. Here's a look at some potential snowfall here and I just want to put this out there that this could shift and likely will. This will not necessarily be the exact scenario, but we're looking at that heavy, that narrow heavy band of snow could shift a little farther west, a little farther east. And again, keep in mind temperatures are going to be very warm. So it could end up being pretty slushy too. Over to the east, lesser amounts because we'll see more rain on that side. More on this throughout the morning and as this system advances in throughout the day today. And now for a look at traffic, here's Devin Fry with the Valley Today's Traffic on the Moon.
Thanks, Lisa. And yeah, I'm enjoying the roadways out here now this morning because they're pretty ideal as far as conditions go. And that doesn't sound like it's going to be the case later on tonight. So I'm enjoying the morning commute now while I can. Overall, the roadways this morning looking a little bit lighter than, uh, uh, well, about normal for what we've been experiencing in the past few weeks, but lighter than what we're used to seeing at this time of the morning. So the new normal as far as traffic flow goes is continuing into today. Uh, you can see how uh, wide open it is around me here in the westbound lanes of I-94. There's really nobody around me, only a few cars behind me. So it's a really ideal morning out here on the roadways. The only real uh, roadblock that we might be facing is on Main Avenue, where we're going to have some lane closures. They're closing down a lane uh, it, uh, on Main Avenue that's going to be lasting for about a week. We talked about that a little bit earlier, and we're going to be talking about it in the next hour on the Fargo CW. But for right now, for your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry. Classes resume today for students in North Dakota amid new restrictions to protect people from the coronavirus. It'll be a lot like how Minnesota kids and teachers have been getting together since Monday. Governors in both North Dakota and Minnesota shut down schools early last month when COVID-19 cases started showing up in the region. Here's a message from Moorhead, but one that any parent or caregiver could use. Keep kids off of public playground equipment during this COVID-19 health crisis. The equipment is not being sanitized between uses, and of course that could spread the infection. Essential Health is asking for donations to help protect health care workers during this pandemic. They need N95 masks, face shields, medical grade personal protective equipment like masks, gowns, eye protection and gloves, and handmade face masks. If you can help, donations can be dropped off Wednesdays and Thursdays between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at the South University Clinic in Fargo. Now, donors are asked to pull up into the valet parking lot off University Drive and remain in their vehicles. You should wait for site staff to collect the donations. The city of Fargo is hosting the weekly Metro briefing on COVID-19 later this morning. Start time is 11 a.m. and it will be broadcast live on both KVLY and KXJB. North Dakota has 17 new positive cases of the coronavirus. It's the second highest single day jump and brings the total now to 126. Eight of the new cases are in Cass County, bringing to 31 the number of cases in the county. That includes Fargo. One of the latest cases of COVID-19 is a male in Grand Forks County between the age of 10 and 19. Health officials say the case attributed to community spread. Minnesota officials are scrambling to set up more than 2,700 new hospital beds across the state for the anticipated surge in COVID-19 cases. The state projects a peak in hospitalizations between mid-May and mid-June. Minnesota cases are up to 629 with 12 deaths. That's 53 new cases and 10 new deaths. Governor Tim Walz is also encouraging people to continue practicing social distancing. He says crowds outside are still too big these days, especially around the lakes. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, three out of 10 of us say we need this right now. Makes sense, the salons are closed. We all think we could use a little fresh trim. A haircut is today's answer. Thank you for tuning in to the Valley today. We wanna to take time to pledge to you that we're working hard to make sure you are staying informed during this COVID-19 pandemic. There are several ways you can do it, including valleynewslive.com, our VNL News app, and on our Valley News Live Facebook page. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. You can join us right now on the Fargo CW.